Hello financial investors and welcome to the channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing our stock market weekly recap for March 2nd through the 6th, 2020. We're going to go ahead and cover the four main indexes, look at stock futures, look at the entire S&P 500 performance here for the week, what stocks were up, what stocks were down. We're then going to look at financials, home builders, oil, the dollar, silver, gold bonds, and we'll take a look at the portfolios, what I did buy this week. It's not exactly the one week recap as far as the portfolio goes but i wanted to kind of go in and discuss a little bit of the purchases that i bought and kind of why i bought them this week so with that said if you are brand new to the channel have not yet subscribed i would really appreciate if you do hit that subscribe button below if you do enjoy this video find it helpful definitely hit the thumbs up and if you have any comments or questions want to say hello drop it below i do read and reply to all your comments and let's go ahead and get into the video so I posted quite a bit this week over on Facebook, had a little bit more time uh, to post. So I did make only one video this week. I've been really busy trying to get some of my business accounting done and wrapped up for tax season for businesses, which is due on the 15th of March. And then I have personal taxes due on the 15th. So I'm just kind of wrap all that up and just been most of my time has been going towards that. I did put out a video earlier, kind of going over what took place last week, putting us 10% down in the market into correction territory. And we've been kind of hanging there. You know, we've had a lot of ups and downs throughout this week, but mainly stayed flat with a slightly positive gain on the week. I was actually unexpectedly, I didn't expect us to see any sort of recovery. I, in my last week's video, said that I expected going into this week that we would probably end up about flat. So I'm not sure how next week will kind of play out. I think on Monday I'll probably have a better idea of what could be going on. I see a lot of the trading volume. There's lots of high trading volume, and that's all due to the computer algorithms that are out there just quickly selling off and quickly buying it up. And you can see those huge swings of hundreds of points within the Dow and just the other indexes, just major swings going on prior to the market opening and after the market closes. And then during the market, uh, during the day, that's just all sort of just fear and such kind of going on with the market. So this week, what I posted on Facebook was I did make another buy in my own Roth IRA over on M1 Finance. I only purchased one ETF. I purchased SPLV. It's heavy within the utilities and real estate investment trust. And it's an S&P 500 low volatility ETF, and it's a monthly paying ETF that pays out. Well, from what I invested in it, it's going to be paying out roughly $110.78 throughout the year, or around $9 and some change every month, which is kind of be reinvested into itself. I still have another $6,000 to dump into my Roth IRA for 2020. This was 54 40 that I put towards 2019 that I hadn't completed. I did another 600 or so into an IRA last year when I was started up my kiddos sort of test account that you can kind of play with. So I, I put the rest of it into my own Roth IRA over on M1 Finance and I still am undecided if I want to invest $6,000 over on M1 Finance in this account or put it over into Merrill Edge or start up the Fidelity one. I did create a Fidelity Roth IRA account and I think what I want to do is put six thousand dollars into my Merrill Edge one to kind of push the the equity in that account up and then I'll transfer the M1 finance accounts the Merrill Edge accounts all over to Fidelity here shortly and then I'll just kind of have Fidelity kind of going on into the future as my primary broker that's kind of what's going on there on Tuesday the Fed's cut by point five percent half a percent cut and it was all due to kind of combat the slowness of what's kind of going on right now with the economy you know we already had a bit of a sluggish end of 2019 we we picked it up towards the end of the year you can see the last three or four months of 2019 that's when we got the majority of our growth but a lot of that was due to stock buybacks to just lowering of the corporate tax rate and just other little miscellaneous things there's still lots of other little warning signals out in the market with the inverted yield curve we now have a 10-year the long-term rate is below one which i know when it is below one that's when the market tends to sell off quite a bit and it kind of slows down after it kind of picks up around one or higher so i know there's quite a bit of different signals out there i know i posted earlier up here earlier so that was a little meme 
and Tuesday after the Fed cut. I think having the Fed cut rates is showing a little bit of weakness in the market. You know, they're expecting a slowdown in the market. I think Monday was a great recovery if we just bring in the S&P 500 here. We had the biggest record gain here within the S&P 500, within the Dow Jones, up over nearly, you know, 1,300 points there in a, in on Monday with... I can't, I can't go back to the next, last week, but where we ended on Friday and open on Monday, we had already gapped up quite a bit on Monday, gapping up, and then we continue to just chug higher, put it on over 5% in a single day. So that was a huge, huge increase right there on Monday, biggest point gain there in the Dow Jones, and I thought that would have showed a lot of strength in the market, maybe finding some sort of a bottom. Now, what I didn't expect, it was an emergency rate cut. And I don't think the market expected it either. I think this showed a lot of weakness from the Fed saying that, okay, why did they do this? You know, is our economy slowing down? Are companies really going to be losing that much revenue, that much earnings into 2020? And that was just a big sign of weakness. Plus, President Trump's been coming out recently saying and calling out for other rate cuts. You know, that's also another sign of weakness. So we have multiple signs of weaknesses kind of being shown with the Fed doing emergency cuts, which hasn't happened since 20, uh, 2008. And then President Trump calling for additional rate cuts, putting us into negative ter territory in the future, where even with your with your tax write-offs, you're actually getting money back for taking out a loan around this rate. I know a lot of investors kind of discussing it. I had seen that my SoFi was cut from 1.6% down to 1.10. My wealth front rates were cut from 1.78 to 1.27%. So I started to go out and I may move all of my savings into just bonds that are, you know, I'm looking for something that's very low volatility. It has a decent yield maybe any anything from 1.75 to 2.5 I'll have to also look at the expense ratio for it to make sure that I'm just I'm not getting a 2% yield but then I have a high expense ratio of 0.75 that just wouldn't make any sense then I just wouldn't need that volatility uh, the length of the fund how long it's been around how long how it's done in the downturns with negative rates and all that so I got a, quite a bit of research to kind of go through I have a list here that I put here of just different ETFs that I have uh, been doing a little bit of research on. I know I was also kind of giving given some ideas from a couple of viewer subscribers here on the channel. So these are just a few different ones that I've been kind of looking at. And one of them, I don't think it was posted in here. I kind of wrote it down afterwards, but is a tax-free bond. Let's see if it's any of these. These are just the yields. Okay, so you can see that these yields for these bonds are pretty high. We have bonds with a 2% yield up to 4.67. So we just kind of have to look for those ones that have a long standing history. Here's the 10% change. So over the past 10 years, how have they done in the market? You can see a few of these right up at the top. They're kind of covered with the letters, but a few of these have actually done pretty well, just kind of remaining flat. They didn't dip in that 2013. I want something to kind of avoid these dips when the market dips. So there's a couple lines in the back that are actually kind of very flat throughout here, throughout the time frame. So I just want something that I can kind of maintain my equity because that's what I'm going to be using to buy real estate. But I also want to be getting something a little bit higher than that 1.27% rate over at Wealthfront. So that's some of the information on the savings and bonds style. Uh, did see on March 4th, that was Wednesday, Avi, just the whole market, the whole market was up over a good percent there on Wednesday. We can see S&P put on 4.22%, the Dow Jones put on 4.53%, and the NASDAQ put on 3.85%. This was a very green positive day. I think every all of my portfolios were in the positive here. This is one off Merrill Edge. Avi, I had actually kind of watched this one for a while to see where it was at. If it'll make, if it'll break ninety three dollars, I'd like to kind of trim this position down a little bit more. I have about five thousand dollars of Avi. I think it's one of my largest single holdings, as far as single stocks goes. It does, it does hold a large position there, as far as equity. I don't like to have, I, I don't think I normally have more than two or three thousand dollars in any single, uh, individual company. So I think I might thin that down and kind of move it into an ETF just to kind of 
move there. Now I looked at the 2008 to 2009 recession that we in the had that we had in the past, and I kind of made this graph. So in the graph below, the recession, you know, the, the time in the market where the market gets hit, was around April 1st of 2008 to April 1st, 2009. Now, the market initially fell by 10 to 12%. This is the cut here. We were moving to some all-time highs, and there's JMAC Investing, put it on a new video, got that notification. So the market was moving towards all-time highs, and the market toppled by about 10 to 12%. Here we had a correction, just a normal 10% correction. This was a 12.5 correction. It's kind of what we're kind of going through now. I'm not saying that history is repeating itself. This is just to kind of show you what could potentially happen. And I'm not scared at all. I would actually really like to see a period where we do go into a 40% area where positions in the stock market just fall really hard because a lot of them, it's going to get, they're going to get sold off due to fear. They're actually going to go below their intrinsic, intrinsic value, their actual value. And over time, investors will see this and they'll just kind of move equity into it in the future, say two to three years out. And all these positions, while they may get hit in the short term, as long as you're in the, you know, as long as you continue to dollar cost average, as long as you continue to control your emotions and just make a commitment of actions versus just think, you know, think with your, take control, don't think with your emotions, just invest as you normally would, you know, you're going to buy on the way up, why not buy on the way down when you're getting that better rate and yield, or just uh, opportunity for return. So anyways, kind of moving on, we did see a slight increase here of 7.59% between the bottom here. So the bottom took place... I didn't record the date. So May through June, August, or September is the 9th. September it went up, May, June, July, August. So from May to around August or so, the market was kind of putting on, it was a slow, slow decrease. You can see here a 12.5% decrease in about two to three months. So now we had a 10% decrease in about a week. So all this could be short in time frame. So here from maybe... June, July, midpoint August, or maybe midpoint July, we put on roughly a 7.6% gain there. And then right at August 15th, that's when this recovery sort of stopped and the market took a really hard dive. And you can see it happened very quickly, just a quick drop in the market, just within a few, a few weeks there. We lost nearly 43% here. And then we kind of just continued to try and rebound but it just couldn't happen we just kind of continue to make lower lows and eventually we bottomed out right around march 1st of 2009 and then from that point if i took march 1st 20 uh, 2009 right at this bottom point that's when the market just started the recovery and it's really hard to time these so if you are not watching your portfolio on a daily basis on an hourly basis on a minute basis it's not worth it trying to time these events if you are like me and you just kind of dollar cost average your way into the market on a weekly basis, I think that's probably one of the best strategies in this time frame right now. Don't do huge deposits unless you're trying to maximize your Roth IRA prior to that cutoff for the year. So in my example, I did put 55 or you know some amount into the market on Monday, but that was because it was for 2019. After April 15th of 2020, I can no longer put that amount towards the past year. So I had to take advantage of that. I saw the opportunity there. I still have another good chunk to invest towards 2020. That's why I did it there. Airlines were taken off on Friday. They're kind of recovering from the whole scare that was kind of going on recently. So we can see Delta up 2.5% uh, and so on. So most of the airliners were doing really well here on Friday. And that's basically everything I kind of posted there. So I do want to go into, do a quick recap of the markets here. Let's see where our time frame's at. I'm going to go quickly through here. I know I covered quite a bit over on Facebook, just kind of talking a lot. So S&P 500 this week wasn't flat. It actually came up 0.61%. I was a little bit, you know, I don't know how what to expect this week. I was actually expecting a flat week this week. Next week, I don't know what to say. You know, I think we're actually showing some signs of recovery. You know, we're, we're going up and down. We're finding a bottom right now is what it seems to me. I think that we're finding some support. We're not moving to new highs because there's not a lot of 
investors aren't willing to kind of dive in right now. They're still unknowns. So the market moves up, it moves down, it moves up, it moves down. And it's just kind of in this range, but we're still kind of putting on a little bit. So I, it looks like it's not exactly recovering right now. It's not falling right now. It's just trending sideways, trying to find some ground on whether the market will continue to move higher or lower. So we may see another flat week going into the next week. So Dow Jones put on 1.79%. Good recovery over there in, in 3M. I know 3M, Walmart, Costco... We're doing really well this week. I know my Costco was sold out of toilet paper. If you have a Costco near you, do you have some items that were sold out at your locations? I never went to Costco this week, but my coworkers did. And they were coming back saying that their toilet paper was completely sold out. So kind of interesting. What is going on out there? NASDAQ increased by 0.10%, basically flat on the week. The Russell 2000 was down by 1.84%, kind of showing some... some this is the mid small cap it called uh, mid the small cap businesses here in the United States more on a national level so this is kind of showing the state of our economy of the smaller businesses I think the smaller businesses will get hit a lot harder than some of the large larger cap companies that is because if they do get sick from what is going on right now then they have to take sick leave the companies I know here in Oregon, we get our normal PTO, but we also get sick time off as well. So we get X amount of days of sick time off if we get sick, plus we have to get paid during that time frame, and then we have PTO on top of it. So these small businesses that are having to pay out to their sick employees, having to work from home, having to go out, buy a bunch of new infrastructure in order to kind of support working from home, I think it's going to hit them hard, harder than a lot of these larger companies that can kind of take that hit so we may see some of these smaller companies get hit much further than they have been right now we can see our year to date and quite a bit of these a lot of these look at all this red here year to date at a lot of these positions so i think a lot of the national any of these smaller mid cap companies will get hit very hard here in the short term due to what is going on right now in the market now long term wise you know what kind of goes on right now in the short term it's going to be pretty rough but long term, as long as they can kind of weather through what will get what will happen in a downturn, they'll make a recovery in the future, most likely. And stock futures right now are looking flat. You know, nothing really kind of going on. No news is kind of going on right now. We'll probably see stock futures begin to pick up here on Sunday, Monday when I do my Monday video. So look forward to that. But right now, not a lot of news kind of moving the market right now. Friday. We can see some positions such as Walmart, Disney. Walmart was saying that they have a lot of sales kind of picking up due to what's going on. People are going in buying cleaning supplies, masks, um, chlorel gel, Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer. Just their sales are picking up. I saw a lot of food items getting bought out at local co-ops. And I know from friends and family overseas, uh, some of their locations are also getting bought up. All the food's kind of getting bought off the shelf. So a lot of, you know, Walmart and other retailers are kind of in getting a bit of more traffic. So Walmart up 1.3% on Friday. Dollar General up 0.57%. If we look at the one-week performance here, we can see probably about a 50-50 split here. So what do investors move to in times of, like, we have a health care, or not a health a health scare kind of going on. So what are the companies that are going to do the best? The ones that produce products or services to kind of combat what is going out there. So Johnson & Johnson up 5.61% on the week. Merck up 7.37. We have Eli Lilly up 12.15%. Pfizer rebounding up 4.79. I didn't buy any Pfizer. I know that was on my bucket list, but I kind of went off and went on something a little less risky. Apple kind of picking back up at 5.73. I didn't see that they dipped down into the 280s. That's where my buy point was. I wanted to rebuy Apple around 280. So we'll kind of see how this one kind of plays out. I'd like to see this one kind of fall again, but I don't know if we'll see it. Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Kimberly Clark has a lot of nice products. General Mills up 11.78%. So consumer goods, healthcare, utilities. That's where you kind of want to be. Also REITs. REITs are also doing really well. Essex Property Trust is in there. That's the only one that I know from this list. So telecom also popping. AT&T at 5.14. I would say that these are safe areas, especially during this time. Services, 
telecom, consumer goods, healthcare, and utilities. Those are going to be your pretty safer buffer sectors in this current market. If we look at financials, they sold off by 3.87%. If we look at home builders, oh, semiconductors, so the NASDAQ, lots of semiconductor technology stocks, this one sold off 2.64%. We see home builders up 1.27%. This could be off from lowered interest rates on Tuesday going into Wednesday. We can see here lowered rates affected the negative on the day from the news by 0.88%. But Wednesday, once that news and the rates started to kind of go out showing that rates dropped by 0.5%, I see a lot of investors in the, in the real estate market getting rates in the 2% range now. They're getting locked in at 2.25% for 15 years or 2.75% for 30 years. I think it's crazy. I know Graham Stefan over at his channel, he was talking about potentially doing a portfolio and getting all of his portfolios kind of down into that 2% range as well. So that saves a lot of money over the long term. Thursday, Friday, home builders kind of sold off what they had made there on Wednesday. Oil continued to sell off hard, down 7.72%. They did have a bit of a recovery here on Monday, maybe having found some bottom, but then with rates and the rest of the market kind of selling off, they continue to just fall really hard. Dollar also moving low off those recent highs of 99. They hit 99.86 here on February 20th on that date. Since then, it just continued to move lower and lower and lower as the Fed is pumping more and more money into this market. They're weakening that dollar. They're bringing the rates down. So you're, you're getting a really weak dollar. You know, the, dollar, the, the value of the dollar is decreasing. What you can purchase with the dollar is decreasing. Uh, they're also lowering the interest rate on your money funds and the savings rate. So sa savers are getting becoming losers. Your dollar is getting weaker. The Fed really wants you to move your money into stocks, something that's going to pump more money into the economy, something that's going to pump more money into businesses. So we can see this. We can see the dollar move down into the 90s here shortly, like low 90s versus the high 90s, almost 100. So. That's what's going to go on there. Silver and gold bounce really nicely this week. Silver up 4.22%. Gold up 6.17%. Bonds continue to move higher on the week, 1.39%. Year to date, 4.9%. Bond there. And mortgage rates. Whoops. Mortgage rates here. That's not mortgage rates. Mortgage rates decreased by not as much as I would, you know, here. Rates decreased by 0.5%. But we may not see that initially or depending on who you're going and checking out, they may be offering a very low rate of 3.25%. Like I said, some investors were getting rates down in the twos for a 15-year fix. 2.25% were some of them that I had seen. 2.75% were some others that I had seen for the 30 years. So you want to shop around. I know I refinance some of mine through better.com. They gave me some really good rates on my, on my last property versus my local credit union. So definitely check around for different rates. And that is basically it as far as what I posted on Facebook, what was posted here on the channel. So now kind of going into the portfolio recap of last week, what went on in the market. I think the portfolios did really well for what had a, you know what happened in the market. We already saw the S&P was up 0.61%. The Dow Jones was up 1.71 and the Nasdaq was up 0.10. I in the M1 Finance account, over the past week, we put on 2.96%, roughly uh, $540 of capital gains com coming back. And we made dividends of $17.69, which have not may not be paid out into the account. So some of the safer holdings here, what he talked about, Kimberly Clark, General Mills, Utilities, Consolidated Edison, Southern Company, Walgreens made a huge Recovery here, 10.38% here in this last week alone. Walmart, 8.87. Clorox, 8.68. CVS Health Corporation, you know, anything health and pharmaceutical related, up really nicely, 8.4. REITs, Digital Realty Trust, WP Carey, Avery Dennison, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, Kellogg. So I have a very well diversified portfolio of consumer goods utilities, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, and REITs that did really well. Some of the ones that didn't perform as well, Stanley Black & Decker, sort of a, it's a consumer, but people don't need to go out and buy power tools or 
items within this area. So I can I can see why they kind of fell by 10.34%. Eaton Vans Financials, all financials got beat up this week. We already saw, let's go look at this. Where's the map? Financials got hammered. JP Morgan, due to lowered rates. So when they cut the rates, that's less money that the banks are going to be able to make because they can't loan as high. So JP Morgan down 6.92%. Bank of America down 9.79%. Wells Fargo 92 Citigroup 3.44%. PNG, not PNC 9.63%. I think financials are continuing to kind of get hammered. I am actually interested in picking up some finan financials. I'll more than likely pick up T. Rowe and more J.P. Morgan if I do pick up some financials. I think there's one other financial I've had my eye on in a while. Eaton Vance, I'll be buying more Eaton Vance, J.P. Morgan. I'd like to get T. Rowe, and I think there's one other. But I'm not going to dilute my portfolio with more financials than I really want. I think two or three positions is good for financials. They're not anything that I like to hold long term. J.P. Morgan, I'll probably more than likely get rid of that in the future. But for the time being, it's not a bad company. I think it's one of the better of the bank. So shopping malls, Las Vegas Sands, or not shopping malls, but uh, casinos and resorts down 5.92. Simon Property Group, retail 3.27. Genuine Parts, sort of sales companies, Cardinal Health. Actually very interested why this one's down 1.63%. Really not a lot of red. You can see here that our lo biggest loser here, Eaton Van, you know, Financials, and Sam Black and & Decker, and some of these ones. But overall, pretty positive on, on the week there. You can see a lot of green, and that's why we're pretty positive. Overall, we're still positive by 13.39%. Uh, mainly just our earned dividends of $913.32 and some market gains, which we kind of made it back this week, kind of putting us here. As far as some of the activity... We did get paid out by Fiserv, $6.64, and the Southern Company, $3.87. So good there. I didn't do any other buys besides the Monday buys, which we already covered. I bought Main Street Capital, Eaton Vance, and McDonald's. McDonald's kind of put on some recovery this week. I'd like to buy more of it. We'll kind of see. The other account, this is my other account where I do some of my buys and sells this is my own Roth IRA this was just funded just here recently okay so I only had a couple accounts in this one I had my growth account I had my IRA which is this is the account that my kid had kind of started to kind of showcase how you can have your money make more money so we put in about $560 into this you can see it is down as far as equity $9.79 we've made $8.96 in dividends and we are currently down overall. Could be an opportunity to buy more, but I'm not adding any more to an IRA. I'm focusing on a Roth IRA right now until I can no longer invest in Roth IRAs. And then I'll primarily invest through IRAs, just tax deferred. And in the Roth IRA, I started this account up recently and made my buys here on Monday. So Monday, after last week's correction of 10%, I thought Monday was a really good opportunity to put equity into this account. So I just did one buy, targeted $5,440, uh, $5, about 98 shares at this one at $55. This one did appreciate quite a bit this week, up on the week by 3.15%. So if we actually look at the differences in these ones, if we go to the taxable and look at the portfolio, this fund, oh, this is VU. Let's go to, this is the other one this one this one if we look at the one week performance this is the same etf splv it put on 4.75 percent but over here this one for the week put on 3.15 percent that is because i did not buy on monday at the bottom i wasn't expecting it to be a bottoming out point but i wanted to make sure that i maxed out for 2019 and i still have my six thousand dollars that i can invest for 2020 so I will more than likely get this portfolio up over the amount, the threshold needed, that I can make $10 of monthly dividends, and then I may just kind of let this one kind of sit for a little bit, or I may continue to do dollar cost average into this one. So I'm unsure how I want to continue to play this one out. I am going to be moving more equity into my wife's account, obviously. This is the primary one that we kind of invest in. Most of my equity is moving into my own businesses. So that's where my capital is moving into. So that is going to be it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy this video, let me know in the comment section below 
what you have done this past two weeks. I know it's been a bit of a rocky time, but I don't think as long as you're making, you're thinking about your process of what you're doing, you're not emotionally jumping in and out of positions. You're not, you know, you're not getting scared. You're not overthinking it as far as emotional. As long as you're making thoughts, you're kind of jotting down your ideas of why you are making the actions that you are doing and not selling. You don't want to sell on the way down. You want to take your profits on the way up. So in the past weeks, I sold off a little portion of my Avi, a little portion of my Apple, a little portion of my Cisco at highs because the market was trending up. I was taking profits. When the market is in uncertain territories, when the market's slushing around and going negative and positive and negative and positive, you don't want to let your emotions take advantage of you there and sell in the red, buy in the green, sell in the red, buy in the green. Because if you do this too much, you're going to be bleeding out capital versus if you just kind of stick through it on the days that are red, if it's a company you're going to be buying and holding for the long term, you still believe in the fundamentals and the company and the business and all that, you know, the reasons that you bought it for, buy it when it's lower. You're going to lower your unit cost. You're going to increase your yields if it's a yield paying company, your dividends. And eventually, when this volatility is out and the unknowns are no longer unknown, they're known, the market will eventually, you know, do its thing. I'm not going to say it's going to move higher. We'll kind of see how this plays out in the future. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.